Hello Flosstube, my name is Cameron. Um, this is my channel about cross stitching. Um, I go by Cam the Stitcher on Instagram and here on Flosstube. And yeah, this is a channel all about cross stitching, a little bit of crafting, whatever I get up to, mostly cross stitching. Um, welcome back to those that have watched me before and are subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Um, I know there are lots of videos out there. And then um, welcome to those that are finding me for the first time. Um, thank you for clicking on my video and consider staying and subscribing and looking at all my um, cross stitch projects. I will say, I believe after I have posted, let's see, I think four videos now. Um, and I've discovered I am an enabler or so I've been told. <laughs> I do have lots of whips um, and I definitely increase that whip count. So, what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about finishes first, um, new starts, whips, a little bit of haul, and then plans. So the last video I posted, I had filmed it before New Year's Eve. And I posted it after the new year. And so, um, but in that video, I let y'all know I'm not doing 12 by 12. Um, 12 by 12 is The Brainchild by Kia from Kia B Quilting, I believe, and Pam um, from Just Keep Stitching. Um, and basically you start, I'm sure all of you know about it, okay? <laughs> but just in case you don't, um, you start 12 new projects um, the day of New Year's Eve and so you start at noon and it takes you all the way to midnight um, and so you do one each hour. Well I very much wanted to do that because I love starting things however I had plans um, and I had a very very good time um, but I was like on Instagram I was enjoying myself at the party don't get me wrong but I was on Instagram and I was checking everybody's um, New Year's Eve stitching um, out so I may have perhaps had my own little 12 by 12 um, just like New Year's Day and the day after that and I kind of like it was very low pressure on myself um, kind of just like I would do it for an hour I would set a timer um, but I took a lot of breaks and then so I like resumed the next day um, because I had no plans for the rest of the weekend which was fab so yeah, so I'm going to cover all of those. Um, but first, let's just get into the stitching. So I had actually two finishes recently. Um, they're both starts and finishes. They're both safs. Um, I finished them in like a day. Um, the first one is from the last video. I mentioned that I got some um, stitchy kindness from Stitch X Love. I believe it's Stitch underscore X underscore Love on Instagram. Um, this is the designer. Um, she designed the um, Mary Shelley. You can't see it, but it's right there. Um, the Mary Shelley um, mystery sampler that was came out in four parts. And um, she sent me her new one of her yeah, her new winter pattern. And it's called winter wreath. And I'll put a picture of what it looks like here. And the reason I'll do that is because she actually stitched it on black fabric but I stitched it on some gray fabric. <laughs> so yeah, I, this was such a very, very quick project. Very, very cute. As you can see, I've like, I could have probably stuck another really small pattern on this fabric, but it's okay. It was a scrap that I had um, from messing with writ dye one day. So, and sorry, it's wrinkly, but so yeah, it's kind of, it looks great on the black fabric. This may, may not be for everyone because you can, um, the snowflakes kind of, they don't pop as much. Um, but I like this look. It's very moody. It's a very moody winter um, 
vibe so I'm into it my cat is getting in my lap <laughs> okay yeah so this was really fun I really enjoyed this one I definitely want to I don't know how I'm gonna finish it if I want to finish it in a hoop or make just a little pillow just like the tiniest little pillow ever I don't know we'll see oh and this is sorry this is 18 count I believe um Ada that I just red dyed so that is that and I did do two strands of DMC over one because I feel like that was good coverage and it wasn't hard to stitch like that again sometimes two strands on 18 count is perfect sometimes it's not so all right the next finish I had is actually out of the what is this well, it's the just, um, I think it's the February edition of Just Cross Stitch magazine. Um, so I purchased a subscription for the year, or I think two years, um, because I wanted to. And they had a deal going on. So anyways, I, there are lots of things I want to stitch in here. The main reason I got it was because um, one of my favorite designers that is on Etsy, um, and I have finished one of their patterns before, Stitch with Coffee. They actually released this really cute uh, Hugs and Kittens. As you can see, these are all the, all the patterns I want to stitch. So that was the reason I got it. But on the very other page, um, there is this really cute design um, designed by Frony Ritter. Of Frony Ritter Designs. And it is called Stinkin' Cute. So that is what I wanted to stitch because I couldn't get over it. I'm sorry, you put skunks, you put skunks on a cross stitch pattern with little w <laughs> stinky waves. <laughs> Anyways, so I had a um, scrap piece of 14 count Ada that I had dyed purple, um, which was perfect. And this is what I did. So, um, I did not have a lot of the DMC this called for, for some reason, um, but that's okay. So what I ended up doing was just pulling from DMC to get the same look. Um, and then instead of using that darker purple for the stinking cute, I actually used a variegated DMC that I had in stash. Um, and it goes through like purples and light green and dark green and I thought that was perfect for this piece um yeah and I also did the little stinky <laughs> cartoon <laughs> um waves there I don't even know what you call those fumes um yes I, st <laughs> I stitched the fumes in the same variegated yeah so I I love this. I definitely want to finish this in a really sweet look little pillow with, um, I want some lace trim. I want to go old school. I want to get pink lace or dye some pink lace. Um, yeah. And I'm going to finish this, but it's literally so cute. I can't. Okay. So those were my two, um, finishes for now the winter wreath I did technically finish in 2022 um so that is actually not my first finish of the year the first finish of the year is the stinking cute one and um I'll take it and I'll talk a little bit more about goals and plans at the end of the video um but I actually did like sit down recently and do that um post new year's because if you don't procrastinate then like I don't know are you really me because that's what I do um the next thing I want to do is go through my start so I picked out 12 starts I had already these things already kitted up um now I have more than 12 starts because I also started two stitch alongs um that were happening for the year so, but I'm going to go through the other ones first and then I'll do the stitch alongs and then I'll get into whips because those stitch alongs will be whips all year. Um, 
that will show up often. So let's see, the first one I'll show you is Holiday Rooster Sal, or Holiday Rooster by <laughs> um, Hemlock and Rice Stitchery, which is um, Julie from, the Kans from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. I did start this pattern because I wanted to and why not? And um, so this was one of my 12 starts. I am stitching this on 40 count Mallow um, by Zweigart, I believe. I want to say, can't remember. Anyways, this is my measly start. Now, again, I only worked on these for an hour. So that is what I got done in an hour, which I'll take it. And also, I'm so sorry, but it is gorgeous. So I think I showed this in my last video. I had, this was part of haul. I'm um, stitching this um, sampler with Clay Pot by Classic Colorworks and Tiny Vine. And it's a very prim look, which I don't often do, but I like to dabble. Um, I was scared about the green not really popping, but I th again, I think I'm just like really vibing with that look of like it it doesn't blend in with this fabric by any means but it is very like complimentary it's very like i don't know but yeah so that was my start on holiday rooster i'm gonna try to go through these i want you guys to see them but i also like don't want to linger too long on them um and i am gonna put them away because i don't want to have a whole mess after this um, the next one, I, st these are not in order. I'm going to be honest. I'm just pulling them. Um, the next one I started, um, I'm really excited about this series, um, this year. It is the Cottage Garden Sampling Series, The Snowman Collector. And this was the first one that was released. It's called The Needle Worker. So I really wanted to start this one because I will be purchasing all of them. <laughs> Um, I actually think this second one is arriving in the mail today, so <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, okay, Bunny, all right, in his pocket, Bunny taking a little nap on his cloak, um, a star made out of buttons, a huge needle that I'm assuming he uses as just like a walking stick, just ev everything about this is gorge, so anyways, I'm stitching these all on different pieces of fabric. Um, I, I'm not doing the big, them all on one piece of fabric. However, that is available. Cottage Garden Samplings has a border, a free border, I believe on their website um, to do that on all one piece, which is nice. So I'm stitching this on 36 count aged paper linen. Um, and now I have to figure out which way is up. Okay, I believe this is it. I did not iron anything because that would have taken me five years. So oh, you can, this is not a good look on me. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if that's a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that is my start. I started in the middle on this. Um, and as you can see, those are his two buttons like on his chest there. Um. So I'm using the called for DMC and there are two um, Weeks Dye Works um, called for. I did get one of the Weeks Dye Works, but um, this is a mess, sorry. But I actually subbed out the other. So this is Weeks Dye Works Baked Apple, um, which is the called for. And then I subbed out Weeks Dye Works Grapefruit for Classic Colorworks Sunset. So that's what I'm working with. Um, I'm not like the biggest fan of Weeks Dye Works to stitch with um, and etc. So I do have, you'll see some Weeks Dye Works in, that I had in stash when I, I bought it very early on um, when I started stitching last year. Uh, full-time I should say or hardcore I don't know but anyways um I don't really love stitching with it and so I don't really buy it at all um anymore so um 
yeah but I have lots of color and cotton to pull from and I like classic color works I like to stitch with um, both of those color and cotton I love and also Roxy Flosco of course um, but yeah that was my start on that and the other thing I will say <laughs> Not to complain, but I love, like, these are, uh, what do you call these? Like, floss card kind of things. I just keep them on here, pull straight from I'm perfect. This is not, this little card is not it. I don't love it because I, I don't want to, like, put, make an extra floss drop for something that already has a floss drop or should already have a floss drop, I should say. Um... You know, I like to use what I've got and yeah, I just don't love their packaging, I should say. I don't, yeah. Anyways, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, so that is the needle worker. So that was super fun to start and I'm very excited. I had another co cottage garden sampling start as well. Sorry for the crinkling, if you can hear that, probably can. Um, this, I think I showed in my last floss tube, this is Strawberry Harvest um, by Carted, Co Cottage Garden Samplings. <laughs> um, yes, I did have to do this one. I did have to. I love strawberries. I love pink, if you couldn't tell. Um, and this calls for two really beautiful overdyed gentle arts. So I'll get those out and show you. Um, so faded rose, this light one and antique rose. So I'm stitching this on 40 count. It's the called for, um, 40 count ancient linen by picture this plus. And again, I've got to figure out which way is up. I think, I think this is, again, I don't have this. So here's the fabric. It doesn't look anything like the picture. And I'm okay with that, it looks cool. So that is the start of my bird. <laughs> so I did, um, I only stitched with two colors and this, again, this is for an hour. So I stitched with DMC 310 and, I don't know, DMC, maybe it was 839 or something. Anyways, so this like tan and um, black, that's in the, this part. And it's not that that's a boring part to stitch, but I, I wanted to start in the middle. And so I was like, well, let me go down and get those colors out of the way so that I can have, I can stitch all that pink and green later and save that for last. So anyways, so that was my start. I feel like I got a lot done on this for an hour. For being 40 count, I don't know. I did I did decent on that one. Not that it's competition and I wasn't racing anybody. Um, but in my head, you know, I'm like, yeah, I did I did good on that one. <laughs> Alright, so that was strawberry harvest. So that was that was my third start. And what I did was I just loaded them all up on that random wheel picker app. Um because I'm indecisive and so I would have sat there all night trying to decide which one I was going to do next or which one I was going to do first. So I just did that and it was super fun. All right, the next two I started, I'm going to show them together. This is, I have put this in my, this is my uh, Shiba Designs project bag. This is actually the only project bag I've ever purchased um, and I love it and I want to buy more, but you know budget um let's see okay so i'm talking about these together because they use the same floss and linen so the first one is mum's the word by pixel pixie cross stitch so yeah this is part of the autumn garden um palette by Cottage Garden Threads. This is the um, st X Stitch the Rainbow stitch along. 
And I don't know if you saw, but I think it was yesterday or the day before they revealed the new palette for um, X Stitch the Rainbow Stitch Along um, slash collab slash design along, shall we call it that? So um, a lot of cross stitch designers all designed a small pattern, I believe like 60 by 60 stitches um, using the same floss. So last year it was Cottage Garden Threads. They are a dyer in Australia and these are the flosses. This is my first time using Cottage Garden Threads. Um, which is kind of the point of this whole thing, right? Like they want to introduce new flosses, new designers um, to stitchers. Um, I don't know if you've ever, if you've used this, this floss card is amazing. So essentially it comes all like, you know, twisted up and it looks all pretty. Um, and then what you do is you untwist it <laughs> and it looks like this. And then you actually squeeze this, um, this part and you just pull it out from the left side and you're good to go. Like this is just a floss drop essentially, but yeah. So these were the colors and I'm stitching this on 32 count fall into autumn linen by, this is hand dyed linen by Manny D. Donna. I got this from Top Knot Stitcher. Um, they were having a, she was having a sale on some fabric one day, so. And this was the perfect fabric for this. It's got like, um, it's got some like green parts. I don't know, it just looks cool. I'm all over the place, here we go. Okay, so that was my start on Mum's the Word. And I actually saw the designer, I think it was on Instagram, um, posted on her story I believe um she's thinking about stitching it again with some spring colors so it'll be because these are mums so she just wants to do them in spring colors and then you can have like an option like a different colorway I would stitch this twice too because um first of all I thought this is one of the cutest um all the patterns were gorgeous. It was so hard picking. Like I can't have all of them. I mean, I could, but um, I did only purchase two. So this was one of them. Um, and I just thought it was really cute. So that is fab. This is on my um, goal to finish um, definitely this year because these are quick stitches. So I just need to get it back out at some point. The next one that I stitched from the same collab. Um, this is by Bendy Stitchy. Um, so Michelle designed this and it is autumn colors. So it says autumn colors don't just fall, they fly. And I thought this was one of the most unique ones that I saw. Uh, and I love that bird and, um, yeah, the use of the variegated floss was like, yes. Very much so. So I actually stitched the whole border and then I started on the um, branch there. And this again on my goals for 2023, this is, I'm gonna finish this for sure. So I'm gonna finish both of these. And I could honestly fit at least two more on here, if not four more uh that'd be pushing it maybe but next two projects also kind of go together they use the same palette and I'm um storing that in my <laughs> project bag I made <laughs> with this cow fabric that's a vibe it has nothing to do with the charts I will say none of my project bags are thematically aligned with my <laughs> projects so I bought these at the very beginning of my like floss tube enablement last year when I was watching all the floss tubes and being enabled and going on um you know cross stitch shopping sites that I had never been on and things so um I purchased two birds of a feather Halloween um charts because 
they're very much my vibe. I really like them. Now they all call for Weeks Dye Works, which I did purchase at the time. Um, so I will be using these because I bought them um, <laughs> and I want to use them. I don't want to waste them. So again, not my favorite to work with, but we're doing it. So the first one I started, let's do the smaller one first. This is, um, I believe it's, yeah, Beware of Cat. So that's the first one I started. Um, I believe it calls for like fabric that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so I ended up stitching this on, I believe this is on 32 count like dirt or something. <laughs> This was, but I don't have the, um, I don't have the fabric sticker left anymore, but, um, yeah, but it is, I think it's a 32 count. It might be a witch old fabric, I want to say, um, but that's where I started. So I started in the middle with the nose and I went, at, I wanted to get like the full width of the face there. And then I did some of the eyes and that's what I got done in an hour. I would love to finish this this year, but I didn't put it, I don't think it's on, actually we'll find out later. I'm not sure if it's on my Whipco board. I have two Whipco boards for the year. So um, I don't think I put, I definitely did not put that on my goals to finish, but that would be a great surprise finish if I put my mind to it. All right. The other one is Birds of a Feather Lost Spirits. I really like this one, giant pumpkin head. So I'm stitching this on 32 count something. I believe it's might also be Witchel. Um, but I started at the top on this one and not in the middle. Um, Cause I believe I have extra fabric. So I want to be able to use that for other projects. But yeah, so all I have stitched right now is the very top Lost Spirits, and I started stitching the bat head here, and I got a couple of the stars in. Um, and I actually didn't even finish stitching the word spirits, but it's almost there. So yeah, all right, the next one I started was, um, everyone started this last year and bought it, um, and I was one of them that bought it because like many other people, I was obsessed. So this is Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. Yeah. Oh, I did def, I had to start this because it's just so beautiful. Um, lots of people have started this already. If you wanna see some further progress, I know Megan from the Seattle Stitcher and Bridgen from the museum stitcher have started this. I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head um, that have shown it their progress, but it's gorgeous. So I am doing a bit of a color conversion. So I'm doing some of the DMC, um, but for the other like, um, the other colors that like appear in big blocks, I wanted to do some over dyes that I have in stash. Um, I'm part of the color and cotton thread club. And so I want to use them. Um, so these are just some of the colors that I'm using. These are all color and cotton. And so I'm using these for like the big, the pumpkins and the leaves and things. So mine's going to look a little bit different than everyone's if they're doing the called for, but I think that was, I'm really lucky. I had a lot of colors that worked. Um, they know what they're doing over there, color cotton, color and cotton. So I'm stitching this on 36 count Affogato um, by Fiber on a Whim, which I think is perfect. It is not the called for, but this is like a, um, it's a good neutral, but it's got like some green-ish, splotches in it not splotches but I don't know it's really pretty 
But anyways, I started at the bottom, which I don't usually do, but I wanted to make sure that I had, I don't know, I was nervous. It was, this pattern is a little difficult to start at the top and I didn't want to start in the middle. So started down here and that is all I got done <laughs> in an hour. Not bad though. So I got some DMC 310 in there and some gray. Um, I'm stitching this with one thread over 36 count. So yeah, that is my start on that. I'm excited to keep working on this. However, um, I don't know if it's gonna get that much progress this year because I got goals and I just started this and this is such a pretty piece. My philosophy, I'm gonna call it a philosophy, is I don't mind having, first of all, a lot of whips, but second of all, whips in my in my whip stash for a long time that I find gorgeous and beautiful and love to work on. Like this, I'm going to love working on it every single time that I pull it out, and I know that. And so if this is in my whip, pile for three years. Um, I'm okay with that. The next, um, new start that I started was by Night Spirit Studio. And this is the, one of the witchcraft woodcuts that they designed and it's called Farmer's Free Fall. Um, and this is the right way up here. This is so cute. Okay. No, because it is just, <laughs> just trying to find something to put behind it like hear me out okay so I'm stitching this on 28 count raw linen but I am doing two over one tent stitch or half stitch so it's gonna be teeny tiny um the like the pattern itself it's a wood cut it's inspired by a wood cut so it's got this like etching sort of vibe and so I love the texture that it gives of doing this instead of full stitches, um, two over two or one over two. It's, so yeah, that is the little man falling. Oh, I think I have it. I have it upside down. So he's falling. So his legs would be up and so his back. So I got... Uh, his head is going to be stitched right there. It's, I want to do all of these and I think that they are very doable if I'm doing it two over one tent stitch. Um, yeah, I'm so into this. It was so fun. I want, I wanted to start these and like, I had them already. It's just DMC 310 and, and I had this a fabric and stash. So I'm glad I got to start that. All right, the next one is also by Night Spirit Studio. This is Unexpected Visitors Holiday Alien Invasion Pattern. And this is, hold on, this is all I have done. I started on that border. The border is quite ornate, but that's like the real draw of, besides, I mean, the whole thing is the real draw, but um, the ornate border is like definitely part of the appeal. And I am stitching this on 32 count. I think it's just like natural Belfast linen. And it just calls for three colors of DMC. And I think it's 310 Blanc or B5200. And, um... The red is 817. So this is like a great piece, I think, um, for travel. It's only three colors. So, so that's that. I've been wanting that. I wanted that to be my Christmas start, but, um, I don't, I was like hanging out with family and things. And so I didn't have time to do a Christmas start, but that's okay. The next one I started is by Mama Witch X Stitch. This is called the Pumpkin King. And I'm stitching this on the same fabric I just showed. Uh, I just cut that piece of fabric in half. This is 
it's 32 count. And I started in the middle on this one. And that's his little face. And I'm actually storing all my DMC on this, um, not thread drop, but thread woodcut card thing. Um, I got this in the Season of the Witch Starlight Stitchery box. And it is very coming in uh, handy. So that is that. I have lots of fun patterns like this that I want to start. I love Halloween. I love fall. I love spooky. I love ooky. All the things. So, all right. And I believe this is my last like 12 by 12 start. This is, um, I believe it's called Bad Vibes Only. Let me see. Or Bad Vibes Sampler. The designer's Fergus Reed and... I believe they go by bad vibes only or something like that on Instagram. I will link it below for sure. Um, they have some of the coolest patterns I've ever, I want to do. Um, the, I think it's like the heart sampler as well. I know D's 20 stitches is stitching that. Um, and it is, it's gorgeous. I love it. I want to stitch it. But I saw this, they came out this last year and I purchased it immediately. And then I was like, it was one of those, I wanted to stitch it so bad, but there was like a lot of pressure on myself because I want, it's, I kitted it up literally so quick. And I'm actually stitching this on one of the um, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers fabric of the month called Sunset Lantana, Lanta. I don't know how to say it, Lantana. I don't know, but it's 40 count and it's this gorgeous sherberty pinky orange color. Um, and they stitched it on an orange. Um, I don't remember the called for, but it's gorgeous. But this is what I had in stash and I think it's gonna work. So I did start in the middle. There's so much in this pattern, like in a, in the best way it's, I can't wait to get to some of the other motifs and things. But yeah, so I started in the middle. So I started with that little, the treetop and that little raven or crow. Little bird guy. The colors for this, I'm using DMC and it also calls for some DMC metallics, which I'm scared to work with, but I'm excited. Um, yes, this is the color palette. This is what we're, oh, doing great fab it is so bright and so fun and it's right up my alley so but yeah I'm really excited there's so many there's like French knots there's back stitching um there's lots of fun in this project and I'm excited to do it all so yeah that was that last 12 by 12 ish start so um really looking forward to stitching on those more during the year but again I've got some goals though I don't know if you'll see them anytime soon all right so the next starts that I had are both stitch alongs that I'm gonna be working on throughout the year so the first one I started was the natural world sal by pixel pixie cross stitch um this is her first stitch along um, that she's doing mystery stitch along and I started this on 32 count exotic orchid Lugana so that is where I am at hello there we go so I started stitching the border first and got all the way down and then I worked my way over here I stitched this a little fish and these waves and now I'm getting into the little mountain range there so I'm stitching this with Aura's Iris by Classic Colorworks um, and this is a very it's a pretty variegated as you can see in that border there it's pretty variegated floss um, I really like this so far I went out of my comfort zone and picked purple on purple, which 
Um, I'm not like a big purple person. I'm very much a pink, a pink person. I like pink and green and orange and I like warm colors, but I wanted to do something. I thought this would be fun and pretty. I really love this color purple. This is gorgeous. And so I wanted to do like a tone on tone situation. Um, but I love, it still pops, even the lighter parts of this variegated thread definitely still pop on the fabric. I like the look. So yeah, I need to keep working on that this month um, to get that part part one done, but it's very manageable part, I think. Um, the border does look like a lot, but it's fun to stitch. I like the negative, using the um, negative space is super fun, so. All right, the next start, the last start um, is Modern Folk Embroideries. 2023 stitch along reaching skyward oh yeah this is gorgeous yes i do have two other modern folk embroidery stitch alongs unfinished and in my whip pile but that goes along with the um philosophy that i've already talked about which is i love stitching on very beautiful things and i don't mind if they sit in my whip pile being worked on um, throughout the year for a long time um this is one of those i would love to keep up with this but i'm not putting that much pressure on myself because this pattern is so gorgeous and i really like my fabric choice and my floss choices and i'm going to enjoy stitching on this for the entire year or two years or three years or four years or what have you. Um, and I feel the same way about Fruits and Plenty. I feel the same way about the 2022 um, stitch along as well. So this is it. This is what I have so far and sorry, I again did not iron. So you're gonna see the hoop marks, but that is what I have done so far. So I've got that first portion done and then I've started um, on that next portion. So for this stitch along, he's actually already released all the parts. However, if you want to stitch along, um, he has divvied it up by month and he's going all the way across the pattern first, which I like um, instead of doing like a page and then going to the next. Oh, this is gorgeous. Okay. So I purchased this fabric. This is 40 count Billie Jean by um, Roxy Flosco. It looked much lighter in the picture, but when it arrived, I was like, okay, that's very denim blue and I'm loving it, but it is darker than I was expecting. So I was a little nervous, right? Because my flosses I picked, I chose Great Lakes. By Roxy Floss Co., which is a great bluey dark green, much more blue, but yeah. And then the other one I picked was Charlie Brown. Now, this brown is much more on the pink tone of brown instead of the gold tone, which I like. Um, not that I don't like gold tones, but I just this was like more of my vibe, right. When I stitched it, because I, I was nervous about the brown, I wasn't nervous about the um, Great Lakes because that's obviously dark enough, but I was nervous about the brown on this fabric, but oh my God, it looks, you can really see the variegation in the brown. I feel like compared to, I mean, it's subtle, but compared to the um, Great Lakes and it looks like bronze, like it's a bronzy moment. It looks rich. Um, I'm, I love this so much. And I'm not even that much of a blue person. Like I just said, like I love pinks and oranges and um, reds and everything like that. And, but this is, and it's gonna look so cool next to my Fruits of Plenty one day. Uh, my Fruits of Plenty is pink on pink on pink. Um, and this will be so, such a beautiful contrast. I don't know, I'm so excited. Yeah, like if I only get halfway done with that this year, I don't care. Like I'm so excited to continue stitching on it. Um, and that's that's how I feel. So that was all for new starts. So my whips, let me get my my calendar up in front of me. So my whip, so I, wor I worked on Reaching Skyward for two days. 
um, two or three days. And then I worked on the Natural World Sal. And then the next one I pulled out is Halloween Wreath Stitch Along by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I'll put a picture of where it is so far. And I did complete um, this month's part. And let's see, this is stitched on 28 count cashel linen and like, I think it's pewter. Yeah, pewter by Picture This Plus. And again, this is not ironed, but that's where I am. It's starting to really come along. <laughs> so I love that they, um, so last month was this like bow part and I like that they skipped the next bow part and we went to this um, candelabra situation. Because not that stitching this wasn't fun, but it is like a lot of the same color block stitching. Um, so this was fun to do. The back stitching on these candles. Let me just say. It was fun, it was a challenge because it's like spider webs or whatever. So they're kind of all over the place, but I followed it to the best of my ability and I think it looks awesome. So I'm very excited. I'm keeping up with this. This honestly, like, I think I stitched on it. Yeah, I stitched on it some uh, on Saturday and Sunday and got it done. So these are very manageable parts for the month. Next whip was this is on my whipco board um this is the changing season stitch along from fox and rabbit which was their free stitch along last year in 2022 i did not finish um i got very far behind but that's okay this was one of those pieces where i was thinking about it and i was like do i ufo this do i love stitching on this anymore because i started it very like um just on a whim because it was free and it was and it was beautiful. And I think we are all very lucky that they offer their stitch alongs for free. Um, I mean, they make great fabric, they make great patterns. I have several of their patterns in stash, like I love them. So I started this on 18 count Ivory Ada and I am a good portion along. I will put what the completed pattern looks like um because it is all out now don't know if you can still get it on their website but i would definitely take a, a look at lou and um if you're interested they have started a new one for 2023 part one is already out and it's gorgeous um i think it's like a something about gardens and roses or something so then i will put a picture of what it looked like last time i showed you and this is a really big piece so i'm just gonna do that Oh my God, that's like all the way against my face. So what I worked on, let's be more specific here. I finished this square out. And then I believe I moved down and I'd already had this like pineapple stuff done. So I moved down and I finished all of this. So that is done. So this part is done. Um, so that was, so I got two parts done, which was actually my goal. And then I started on the square right here. So I've made goals this year for my Whipco board, um, which I'm excited about because I did not do that last year. I kind of was just like this, it will just kind of determine what I'm working on each month. I didn't really stick to it. I stuck to it a little bit, but like very loosey goosey. But this year I'm being, a little bit more um, not strict on myself because that wouldn't work but I've actually come up with kind of a new method um, and that is I have my two whip go calls two big whip go calls and then I have two small whip go calls so I have one whip go board that is bigger projects one that's smaller projects um, and the reason I do that is because I feel like smaller projects like kind of go by the wayside because I'm like focused on getting progress on these bigger um because I feel guilty or what have you know whatever the reason is and so I decided I was going to have two whip go boards 
And what I do is I actually have the um, random wheel app on my phone. And so each month what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my four WIPCO calls in there. So the two smalls, two big ones, and then any stitch alongs I'm actively working on. So I'll put in Reaching Skyward by Modern Folk Embroidery, the Halloween wreath until that's finished, and Natural World Sal as well. And I'm gonna put all of those in there and then each, the night before the next day basically, so each day I'll spin it. And I've been doing that so far this month and it's been a real joy. So last night I spun for today and I got Modern Folk Embroidery's Move Forward in Loves cause that's one of my other whip go calls. And it was also my whip go call for December. So working on that two months in a row. And so far I haven't picked that up so I don't have any progress to show you. Um, but that's what I'll work on today. And then like, I'll do the same thing for tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. So it's nice because I have lots of options. I've got my sows in there, but then it's still like, what I did before was I spun the wheel, but I did it like uh, when the Whipco numbers were called the month before at the end. And I would fill in my calendar, what I was gonna work with, work on that day. And I think what I would do is I would look at the calendar and be like, oh, I'm working on this tomorrow. And I would get like, it was that like pressure and like, oh, uh, like, God, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if it's just my personality, but I'm like, well, I don't, I don't want to work on that. And then I would <laughs> like work on something else or I would continue working on the project I was working on the day before because I want to get more progress or what have you. So that is what I'm doing. It is working out so far. Um, and yeah. So I have one more whip to show you that was also, this is on my smalls um, whipco board. And I've shown this to you recently as well. So this is the Button and Beads Mill Hill Autumn Series, Wanda's Wands. So this is one of the smalls um, on my whipco board that got called. And I spun the wheel and worked on this Tuesday of this week. My goal for this piece is to finish all of the cross stitches um, because there's back stitching and there's beading. So I want to finish all of the cross stitches and I'm actually getting pretty close. So I'm excited about that. I'm just gonna put this behind it. Hopefully that'll work. So I'll put a picture of what it looked like last week or not last week, <laughs> last time I showed you. And this is what it looks like now. I've actually gotten a lot of progress on this. So I was almost like, oh, I don't wanna work on that. Cause this is kind of my travel project. And so to work on it, like on my couch, I was like, this feels wrong. But I ended up, I stuck to it and I ended up getting, I got a lot done. I got a lot more done than I would like in the car or something. Um, so essentially I filled in a lot more over here, filled in this sign filled in all of this um, area pretty much and some gold through here. And then you can kind of see that that's a witch. I did um, go ahead and backstitch that line under the hat because that's the only backstitching that called for two strands of um, DMC 310. So I wanted to get that um, over with there. Yeah, so really all I have to do is just a bunch of magenta two tones of magenta throughout this um, sky situation. And then I'll do the back stitching and then beading. But I'm almost to my goal for this, so I'm excited. And the other thing too is like, once I finish um, on my wheel that I'm spinning for the month, if I finish that part of like a stitch along that comes out monthly, then I delete it off the wheel, right? And then if I reach my goal on a Whipco um, call, I'm debating on whether I may feel like if I'm getting far behind on my stitch alongs or I maybe I want to work on the other whip go call a little bit more I'm just going to take that if once I reach the goal I'm going to take it off my wheel um and you know we're only in today is the 12th of January and I feel like I'm getting a lot of progress I don't know like I feel good about this system so I'm excited I did forget a whip so let me show you that. I'm just gonna cut this into, I'm gonna cut this into the whip portion maybe, or maybe not, who knows. So this is called um, 
witchy bathroom it is by stitchy princess i believe yes and i started this last year on a whim um i think for like my birthday i started a bunch of smalls and this was on my smalls whipco board um and it got called yesterday like on the wheel and i'm stitching this on 32 count lime lugana and that is where i am and i'll have a picture over here of what it looked like last time i showed you i got really far on this yesterday i was like i was i was doing a lot so i went down here did all these i did the shower curtain i stitched the little witch face and the hat top of the bathtub finished out the bubbles did some back stitching as well um these are little mushrooms little like chicken feet or something did the back stitching up here filled out the ghost mirror i did lots so and that is where that is my goal for this for the month is to finish it and i think that if i just if it, I spin the wheel and it comes up one more time, I that will be a finish. Because I just have to fill in the bathtub here um, and then finish filling out these eyes, I think. I think that's... And then I think some more backstitching, um, maybe. But I kind of am backstitching as I go along, so. Yeah, that's that. It's very... That's more true to color, that green. Thing I want to show you is haul kind of yes oh and I want to show you a failure I went to Joann's um, a couple weeks ago and I got some not a couple weeks ago not that long ago and I got some Christmas fabric that was on clearance after Christmas um, because I wanted to make some more project bags and I have like a lot of Halloween project bags so I was like let me get some other holidays in there or other things well, Elizabeth Ann can stitch. The fabulous woman she is. She released a tutorial on how to make a project folder. And silly old me thought in all of my experience of sewing um, project bags. <laughs> and I've made a couple of clothes that are hit or miss there. I thought, oh, I can do this, right? So I got the things that I needed for it, which was um, like a longer zipper that I had than I had in my stash and like the magnets and all that. And I was like, I'm gonna make a project folder. Well, I think it was not yesterday, it was Tuesday. I sat, I got my sewing machine out. I got all the things out. Now I will tell you, I live in a one bedroom apartment with my boyfriend and we don't have a lot of room so i don't have like a craft room i don't have i have a living room where my desk is for work i have my bedroom and i have a kitchen i have a bathroom that's it so what i do is he actually has like a rolling desk that he uses for his gaming laptop and what i do is i take all of his stuff off of it and i put out my cutting mat and do all my things i cut first and then i iron everything and then i get my sewing machine out and I did all of that and I was feeling confident. Anyways, this is my failed project folder. <laughs> so let me just, <laughs> this is it guys. This is, um, and you know what? It's okay. It's learning. I'm living and I'm learning and I'm, I'm loving. So let me tell you what went wrong. Number one, I don't have one of those quilting rulers that she has. So I didn't have the like angle, the 45 degree angle thing to mark um, where to quilt. I've also never quilted before. So <laughs> so that was one thing. The other thing is I did have, I do have a disappearing ink pen, but it disappears real fast. So couldn't do that either. So what I ended up doing was just like, trying to follow the marks on my sewing machine and it did not work out so as you can see it is not look at the the wonkiness of this quilting right that's worse it's worse on this side 
Well, I got over that and I was like, you know what? It's okay. This is my first one. Um, it's just for me, like who cares, right? Then I moved on. I did this pocket situation and I sewed that with the binding. Um, that worked out just fine. So that is a, a fabric pocket that worked out. Then I got to the vinyl pocket and you'd think I've made several vinyl front project bags. This would be the easiest part for me. Well, it was until the zipper completely broke and the actual zipper part um, fell off and I couldn't get it back on and I, we Googled everything. I tried to get my boyfriend to do it. Um, we just, we both just could not get it. And then he ended up breaking the zipper part even more by trying to do it with pliers and all this stuff. So it was a bit of a lost cause there. So yeah. So what I think I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna let it sit for a while and time out. But I'm very much like, I bought the fabric, I did that, you know, I already put all this work into it, I do wanna finish it. So what I'm gonna do is just, I guess, unpick this and cut more binding strips. I have plenty of fabric, so I'll cut more binding strips, I'll get a new zipper, and I will restart this um, vinyl pocket side and then I will continue. Now I've never like used binding in the way she did across the whole like project folder so I'm a little nervous about that part too but anyways this is just I had to show the failure I had to show <laughs> I tried something and <laughs> it didn't work but that's okay. I will show you, this is more like plans, not really haul, but I did make this project bag after that failure because I was like, I'm gonna, I need something. I need a little bit of success here. And I have my new start for tomorrow, Friday, 13th. I have that in there, but. So yeah, I picked, this was some um, fabric from Joann's that was in like a little clearance bin and it's so cute. And then I already had this fabric in stash from a local fabric um, store here. So yeah, and I used a purple zipper, which is, it's so cute. Anyways, I'm really proud of this one. Looks great. But anyways, what I have in there, I talked about this on my last floss tube. Um, Megan from the Seattle Stitcher and I are starting a um, stitch along for Kathy Barrick's White Winter Moth and it's hashtag Winter Moth Sal. Um, so the idea behind this is we both wanted to start this project and um, we're doing it on the first Friday the 13th of the year, which is tomorrow, um, January the 13th. And we just want you guys to join along. Um, if you have this pattern in your stash um, and you wanna start it, please do. If you have any other like moth patterns, there's so many out there. I know, I think Stitch Sprout has moth patterns. Um, I just saw one, I think it's Fine Frog Stitching, Frog something stitching. They just came out with one or have one. Um, I think Night Spirit Studio has a moth one. Kathy Barrick has other moth patterns. Um, yeah, Stitch on a Moth, Stitch on a Butterfly. Stitch on an insect. I don't know. Yeah, and join us at hashtag um, Winter Moth Sal. So the fun thing about this is that when I bought it, this was an expo release, I believe, this past year. I was like, ooh, white and black with the like gold. That is some. That's a move. I thought this was gray. Like, I thought this was black and white. It's not. And I'm okay with that because the color palette's actually gorge. So I ended up. I'm doing a mix of a bunch of threads. So I'm doing two color and cottons, one gentle arts and two classic color works and then a DMC. So for the gold, I'm doing um, Amber Waves by color and cotton. I'm doing Old Lace for the white. I'm doing Blue Spruce by Gentle Art for the really dark, what looks like black in there. It is like a um, really dark turquoise color. And then I'm doing Deep Fennel and Shamrock, which they look very similar. Oop, 
I keep doing that. But Shamrock is a little bit more variegated and does have like a darker, oh, you can see it right there. That's perf. And then um, Deep Fennel is not as variegated and a little bit lighter. And then I'm using DMC um, 927, which is the lightest turquoise aqua there. So that is the color palette for this, which a lot of people, I will, at least me, when I saw this, I did not know that. And I'm stitching this on 40 count Chai Love You by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. This was their um, March color of the month last year. Um, let me take, so that is my color palette there. I love it. Megan is stitching hers on, I think, a Be Stitch Me Neutrals Club fabric of the month um, called Honey. And it's definitely like more the vibe of the picture. It's a little bit warmer than what I've got going on here. Um, but I'm very excited. And she's also stitching her, she's stitching hers in DMC. Um, and yeah, she kitted that up recently. She has a, she went live on YouTube and that's on her channel if you want to go watch. Um, but yeah, so please join us. I'm so excited to start this tomorrow. Um, like I'm excited to work on move forward in love today, but I'm like, oh, I literally can't wait. Um, but yeah, so that is that. Um, I do have just a very, very small amount of haul and then I'll get into, um, plans. So, um, the first thing I got was my color and cotton. Um, oh my gosh, what is that? January Thread Club and I get five skeins each month and oh my god I love the colors this month. They're much brighter than what I've been getting. I feel like so far I have lots of greens and oranges and reds. I have a little bit of blue now I think from last month I can't remember yeah. Um, but this month they gave us some blues, some pinks, and some purples. So the first one, I'm going to do the brightest first. This is called Heavenly. That is so fun. Then we've got Lovebirds, which is, it's bright, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's like a really good blue. I love that. I can't, I'm not even that into blue, but I'm like, I love that. Radiant Lilac. That is gorgeous. That's like my, that's one of my favorite color purples for sure. And then we've got Desire, which is a great, just rosy. This would actually be, if you're in this club, this would be, if you want to stitch that um, Strawberry Harvest by Cottage Garden Samplings, this would be a great um, substitute for the Gentle Arts Antique Rose if you can't get your hands on it or if you want to just use your stash. And then this is Rose Petals. And honestly, if you wanted to do like a brighter palette for the Strawberry Harvest, this would be a great substitute for the Faded Rose. It's definitely brighter than Faded Rose, but that would be fun. So yeah, those are the colors. These are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. So the Witchy Stitcher, I'm part of her Patreon. Um, she released for the month of January, um, Welcome to the Crypt. So I'll put a picture of that there. Um, so that is one of the Patreon patterns I have um, for the month. And then the other pattern I purchased was from, I think it's by um, Glitch Stitch AU. Um, it is the Stardew Valley Autumn pattern. Um, I know Crafty um, Gaming Jamie, I think is her name. Oh my God, I need to memorize these names. Um, I'll put it down below. Um, she is on FlossTube and on Instagram. Um, and she does, first of all, her Flossmas was so fun. She worked on like, um, I think it was a Doreen Jones advent calendar kind of stitch along she did like one day every day and then she also picked a whip um a different whip to work on each day out of like a bucket oh my god it was so exciting um I just like I don't know also I love watching people that do like all a lot of full coverage it's fun because like 
I like to live through them like because I only have two or three like full coverages um but anyways she's stitching this um she's also stitching I believe the winter one and the designer just came out with the summer one and they have a spring one as well so I got the fall one because I actually just got into Stardew Valley I am a newbie um my boyfriend loves it um he played it for a couple months like last year I think I'm just like non-stop playing it and I don't know I like I knew that I was gonna like it but I guess it's just got a huge like fandom that I was like a little bit like what if I'm not good at it or anyways it is so fun so I'm playing that on my switch at the moment um and it's been super fun so I got obsessed and I got that pattern because I love autumn so if I'm gonna stitch one of them I'm definitely gonna stitch that one and if I'm gonna stitch all of them I'm gonna start with that one um so that was that the other pattern I do want to talk about I haven't purchased it yet but it is I will um in the next few days it is by sprouting oh, I want to find it because I want to get it right I have such a bad memory I don't actually I'm pretty good at <laughs> pretty good at remembering things so this is um it has been in my favorites um list on Etsy for like a long time um and I just never like clicked purchase because I was like ah, like I want to do it but I have so many things right um so this is by Sprouting Lupine or lupine um this is the love bug sampler so is that not gorgeous so this has recirculated <laughs> because you know it's getting close to valentine's day and it's um kind of, it's like a kind of valentine's day themed not really um pattern the colors are so gorgeous so i will be purchasing that in the next few days because um marjorie from marjorie made um is starting a stitch along soon um i think more details to come but i will definitely be joining i think she's gonna start it for february the first and yeah we're all gonna stitch on that it's gorgeous it's such a gorgeous pattern everyone was sharing it it was so funny i was like I loved that it was recirculating like um and that people were like oh my god this is so and I'm like yes I know it is beautiful and and I'm so excited um so yeah so I definitely want to start that on February the 1st with with Marjorie for sure plans so let me I in my last video I really wanted to go over my plans but I really didn't have like I had ideas but um I use Notion um, and if you're not familiar with that, it is like a project management type of like software sort of thing. Very easy to use. Um, it's free and they have apps. Um, they have an app for Apple. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure about Android, but, um, yeah so I have Notion and I think I've shown this before it's where I keep like track of all the patterns that I have purchased um, and then all my whips of course so basically this is my Notion um, cross stitch like plan thing I've got going on so the first thing at the top you're gonna see is my 2023 finishes count right now I have one which was that start and finish that I showed you at the beginning of the video and then next I've got my um 2023 goals so these are just the only thing I put on here um on my like home page is for the finishes that I have essentially so um I have more like smaller goals for my other whips but these are just the ones I definitely want to finish by the end of the year and I counted those up and I want to at least have 14 finishes. Um, so right now I'm at one. I believe I should get over 14 finishes if I can reach all these, um, but we'll see. The other um, thing you see here under my whips here 
is these are just my monthly goals right so like i have i want to finish witchy bathroom i want to finish all the stitches on mill hill and then i want to finish like part one of these stitch alongs <coughs> And then I want to start White Winter Moth. That's an easy check off there. Um, and then like I want to finish December's part of Dark Queen because I know I'm far behind on that. But I, And I want to have these realistic goals. This is a link to my calendar that I just showed you on, my, on um, Google. And then you scroll down and I've got like, these are just all the patterns I have, right? And then I've got my ones, uh, patterns that I own, that I have kitted, that I could start at any point. And then these are my whips. So like I showed, these were all my new starts essentially. And then we're getting into 2022 stuff. So that's fun. And then once I finish one of these, I just click this and click finished or FFO'd if I have done that. Um, but yeah. So that's what that looks like. And then I also have everything I finished um, from last year on here, just to keep track. And then everything I FFO'd, which is fun. I do have a UFO section. So I have UFO'd Ornament Castle because I wanna restart that. And then I've also UFO'd Spring Band Sampler. I'm actually thinking of giving that away. I did have someone comment and we'll see if they reach out about wanting that. So yeah, so that's what that looks like. Um, the other thing is I do have more of a list on my 2023 goals and these are some smaller goals that I have. So I do have all the finishes that I wanna finish here, but then I have like, um, you know, I completed two parts of the Changing Seasons stitch along this month. Um, that was my goal. I have that checked off. I am going to probably keep working on it throughout the month because I do want progress on it, but I feel good about what I did on that. Um, then I have like complete two pages, um, finish one ornament. I want to get to 50% or 20% on some of these. I, I definitely like looked through all of them and thought, what can I realistically get done in a month while I'm also working on other projects? Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've got going on. And the we're gonna see if I keep up with my finishes um, and my sales, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to stop starting things. Um, I want to start things when I feel like starting them. I want to join in on stitch alongs and start alongs when I feel like it. Um, I know that that does not work for everyone. I know that having, you know, uh, 63 whips is not for everyone, but I am enjoying myself. And this is going to be my first full year doing floss tube. And I want to join in on all the things and I want to have fun. And if that means that I have a hundred whips at the end of the year, that means I have a hundred whips. Um, I don't think that'll happen, but yeah, I just, I want to, I don't want to limit myself. I want to have a good time and yeah, I think, um, last year was really fun. I did start all the things. I was a very new, I was new to floss tube and new to all these types. I was new to linen and overdyed floss and, and all those things. Um, so I want to, I want to continue enjoying myself and, and starting. <sighs> so I believe that's it. I am going to, um, try to get this uploaded tomorrow. So you'll see this on a Friday, hopefully. Um, I'm going to continue to work on, um, move forward in love and then tomorrow I'll be starting White Winter Moth and I'll work on that all day. Um, I won't work on one of my whip go calls cause I wanna get as much done as I can um, in the day on that. And yeah, so next time I see you, hopefully there's some progress on that. Um, there should be some more progress on the whip go calls and my stitch alongs. 
and then we'll talk about February by that time. So I know I don't have like a consistent um, posting schedule, but I do, I want to try to aim for at least once every two weeks. Um, I think that's good for me. I would, I'd love to be able to record shorter videos and do one each week, but realistically that's like it's just kind of difficult for me to have time to film um, and do those things each week. Um, because again, I live in a one bedroom apartment and um, yeah, <laughs> it's just like a little awkward when my partner walks in and is like, and I'm, this is my setup, you know? Um, but yeah, so I will see you guys soon. Um, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. What are your 2023 plans? Are you going to stitch in all the things? Are you going to limit yourself? Are you going to focus on whips? Are you going to start all the things? Um, I'm curious. What are you guys going to do? Um, I totally get when people are like, I'm just going to work on these few things this year and try to get them done. I think it's great to have goals. That is why I went through and I did goals for myself this year. Um, and I feel good about them. I feel really good. If I can get to, you know, 25% on this pattern and 50% on this one and finish this one, I'm going to feel really good at the end of the day. Um, and at the end of the year. And I think we all need to give each other and give ourselves some grace and, <laughs> we're just this is a hobby and we're having fun and that's how i feel um so yeah um i'm very excited to continue doing this in the new year um in 2023 and just keep connecting with stitchers and yeah i'm just stalling at this point so i will see you guys next time um happy stitching have a good day live laugh love yeah